Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're having a great day. I injured myself, so the day isn't so awesome here, but <laughs> oh well, totally my fault too. I had a little bit of a pain in my rib cage, and I decided that I would ignore it and do my workout anyways. And today was my heavy weights day, and I was doing chest press, and then I kind of sort of heard something <laughs> like not really a pop, but not really a crack either, just something. And now it hurts to breathe. <laughs> so I'm in a bit of pain. I think it's just a rib is just a little bit out of place. I've had something similar to this before and it feels like the same kind of thing. So that is what I'm dealing with now and I'm kind of pissed off. <laughs> but anyways, I will go get fixed up and everything will be awesome. At least it's not a back injury. I used to throw my back out every so often and um, that was terrible. That would leave me flat on my back for you know a couple of weeks not being able to move. Um, it's amazing how many small movements you make will aggravate a sore back. So it's just a rib cage thing. It's kind of uncomfortable. I just have to make sure I sit up nice and tall and don't breathe too deeply. <laughs> oh well. Hey Ange, how's it going? So I wanted to talk today about um, working on your strengths rather than working on your weaknesses. Um, and I think a lot of people um, kind of have the idea, and I did too, that you should work on your weaknesses so that you get better at that. You can be good at everything, <laughs> which isn't very practical. Hey, Stacy, how's it going? Hi, Andre. Hey, Nolan. Um, so I, um, I was listening to my book, Five Second Rule, and um, she started talking about how you should work on your, your strengths rather than your weaknesses. Uh, I was talking to my client about it, and she feels the same way with her kids as well. And I just thought, you know, it makes so much more sense to work on what you're already strong in. Like, why waste time and effort working on something that you kind of suck at only to get maybe a little bit good at it? when you could focus your time and energy on something you're already good at and become great at it. And plus you'll enjoy that a lot more because it sucks trying to work on something you're not good at. Nobody enjoys doing that. Um, we like to work on things that we're already good at because it, it feels good, it feels more natural. Hey Peggy Sue, how's it going? Um, so, you know, like if you think about like kids, they bring home their report card and um, they're, they're doing really poorly in one subject. And quite often the thinking is, okay, we got to work on this, we got to get that grade up, we need to get you a tutor, we're going to spend some time and effort on this, and the stuff they did really awesome in, they're just like, oh, good for you, you did good on that. And then they focus on the, the weakness. And then the kid is like spending all this time and effort to maybe get a little tiny bit better at the thing they're not so good at, but the thing that they're really good at, they could be coming, be, um, become really great at it, but they're not spending their time and their energy there. So why not, you know, say to the kid, like, okay, you're not good at this. Make sure you pass, but let's focus on what you're really good at, which is going to build their self-esteem and, you know, possibly, you know, turn them into something really amazing, right? So it just, when I heard it and I thought about it, I just thought, yeah, that makes so much sense. Like when my accountant told me after my first year of business, I tried to do my own books, right? Because I wanted to do everything. I'm a bit of a control freak and I wanted to be able to do everything. Hey, Kenny, how's it going? Um, so I did my books my first year, and then my taxes got done that year. Um, has to be done by a certified accountant. And um, he basically said, Heather, <laughs> you're not a numbers girl. You're a trainer. Stay away from your books. <laughs> and, you know, my first inclination was, well, I can, I can try harder. I can get better. I can learn how to do it better. And then I thought, why am I going to put my time and my energy there when I've got all these other things I need to do at my studio that I'm really good at? I can focus on that and I can hire someone to do my books. Like, how much better is that? Like, I, I'm not even interested in doing my books because I'm not good with numbers. So therefore, I hate doing that kind of stuff. So why would I, you know, waste my time and my energy doing that? So I hired a bookkeeper, um, he takes care of my books, no problem, the accountant's happy, I'm happy, and that leaves me my time and my energy to focus on the things that I'm really good at, which is putting together classes and, um, um, you know, just doing that kind of thing, running a studio and, and everything that comes with that and um, staying in touch with my clients, like the stuff that I love to do and that I'm good at. So I'm going to focus on that. Hi Mark, how's it going? So um, um, Andre, your job is pressing computer stuff. You have no choice but to, to develop there. Yeah, well, that's the thing, too. Sometimes you find yourself in a job, and um, you do have to work on something that you're not so good at um, because that's the job. So, yeah, unfortunately, that is the reality of it for sure. 
Um, sometimes we don't have that choice to just put all of our energy in the stuff that we're, we're good at. But if you kind of go into it with more of an attitude of, you know, learn the basics of the stuff you're not so good at so you, you, can, you can get those done, you can get those functions done, but focus more of your time and your energy on things that you're already strong at. And some of your strengths will come into play with the things that you're weak at. So, you know, if you're really strong at being consistent at stuff, that's going to, you know, help you with stuff that you're not so good at because when you're consistent at things, um, you do improve at things. So if you're, if that's a strong point in you, you can focus on, on that strength to help you with things that you're not as good at. Uh, but again, trying to focus more of your energy towards the things that you are really good at. Hi, Bob. Um, so maybe you're not sure what your strengths are, and um, that's a pretty common thing. People don't actually know what they're what they're really good at. So what are some things to consider when you're trying to figure that out? Well, first thing you want to think about is what gets you really excited. You know you're really great at something when you get excited about doing it, because that's human nature. Like we want to do the things we're good at. That's what's what feels good. That's what's fun. That's what gets us all excited and pumped up. So think about that. Like take some time to really think about what gets you excited. Hey Nikki. Um, for me, you know, it was going to the gym. I was working in the lab, and um, you know, I did fine at that. Um, I learned how to do it. It wasn't anything I was really super passionate about, but I was getting by with that. But when I thought about going to the gym and I thought about helping people at the gym even, that just got me super excited. That made me really happy. So that was, you know, a strength of mine. At the time, I didn't really realize. It took me a little while to actually realize that that was something I could make into a career. <laughs> but I did eventually make that connection. Um, and then the next one you want to ask yourself is what activity causes you to lose all track of time? So think about the last time you were doing something and it's like nothing else mattered. Like you lost track of time, you forgot about the things that were bugging you during the day. It was just you. It was just you and this thing that you were doing, and you were just kind of in your bliss. So what was that? You know, what was that one thing? Um, for me, it's um, working out. So you know, become a fitness instructor. I get to work out and make money at it. Um, so that you know, that was a great thing for me to do. That that worked in perfectly with my strengths and what made me happy. Uh, third question you want to ask yourself is, what do you find yourself preoccupied with most of the time? So. For me, when I was working in the lab, I was always preoccupied with when can I get to the gym? <laughs> when am I going to fit in my workout? And then, um, you know, I, it just kept coming into my head more and more and more where that was like all I was thinking about. So it was kind of, it became very obvious to me at a certain point that it was time to get to, um, it was time to change my career. So as I said, when you excel at something, it's only human nature to want to do that thing as much as possible. So if you find yourself, you know, thinking about something that's getting you excited and it's the thing that you want to do, then that's your strength. That's what you're strong at. And then the tricky part is figuring out, or maybe not so tricky part, is figuring out how to make that a possible career for yourself. And then if you're still kind of searching, you're still really not sure. Um, oh, thanks. Thanks, Nolan. <laughs> I love my ink, too. <laughs> um, and Nolan, you're good on bass, but not so much on guitar, but I work on it. Yeah, but put more, I would put more effort into your bass and then get like really super crazy awesome at it. <laughs> and then guitar can be kind of something that you work on on the side and, and that's something you, you might enjoy doing. But, you know, if your raw talent lies in bass, why not develop that skill to its fullest? Hey, Laura, how's it going? Um, so if you're still not sure, you know, what you're really good at, Bob, you're good at fishing. You can make a career out of that for sure. I think you do do that for a career. I'm not positive, but I think that's what you're you're doing for work. Um, so yeah, that's a great line of work. Um, so ask yourself, what do people compliment you on the most? So what characteristic or what you know particular thing that you do that you find people complimenting you on the most? Um, for me, when I first got into the fitness industry. I was a personal trainer. That's what I thought I wanted to be. And then um, a friend of mine um, talked me into teaching my first spin class, and I fought it all the way, but I finally gave in and said, okay, I'll teach a spin class. And then I did it, and I loved it. And um, I, I found that people were complimenting me a lot on my classes and how, you know, how I ran my classes and how I delivered my classes and the music I used and stuff like that. So I realized that that was my talent. If I was going to open a studio, it should be a studio for classes, not just a personal training studio. And I eventually got out of uh, personal training pretty much altogether. I have one client that I see because I've been seeing her for years. 
but my passion is teaching classes, teaching groups. Um, I'm not um, particularly great at the one-on-one -on -one thing. Um, I'm better at the group thing, so um, that's where I put. That's where I focus my time and my energy. Laura, you're good at photography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Photography's awesome. You can have a good career in that too if you want to, or just have a really awesome um, hobby with it. I love photography. Um, so why focus on strengths? Well, no one wants to waste time and effort. So you know why pressure yourself to be good at something that you're just not good at? Like sometimes we have to, you know, really take a hard look at things and really be honest with ourselves and just say, look, I'm I'm not good at this. You know, um, no matter how hard I try, at best I'm going to get mediocre, and you know that's no fun. You want to be great. Um, for me, that would that would be personal training. I mean, I was okay at it, but I realized that I wasn't the right kind of personality for the one-on-one -on -one thing for most people. You know, there were some people that I just really clicked with and I had, you know, I loved those clients, they were great, but for the majority, it's just not really a good fit for me. So I had to, you know, realize that and be honest with myself and realize that I'm better with groups and that's, that makes me happy. When I realized that and I went, you know, after what I was good at and what I was happy with doing, that's when, you know, my whole life changed. and. I was just so super happy. Um, so you know, you could spend a ton of time, money, and effort trying to get good at something that you lack the talent for, and then in the end, you're like mediocre at it, right? So that's a little disappointing. Or you can focus your time, money, and energy on things you're already good at and become great at them. So I invested a lot of time, money, and energy into opening my studio because I know I'm great at teaching classes. I know I have a knack for fitness. I know I have, I'm have. i great with helping people out with their fitness and their nutrition, and I know it's something I'm really passionate about, so that's where I focused everything rather than trying to fight that and focus on things that you know, I'm not as good at. Hey, Richard, how's it going? Um, so, you know, that's why focusing on strengths makes a little more sense. And, you know, think about some of the greatest people you know, and um, chances are you know them for being great at one thing. So whether it's painting or sports or motivational speakers or whatever, when you think of that person, you think of how great they are at this one thing. And you know, they're probably not good at everything. Nobody's good at everything. There's probably some things they really super suck at, <laughs> but you know them as being great at this one thing. It's because they put their time and their energy and their focus into um, you know, um, getting better and better at that, that one thing that they're already uh, really good at getting it to a point where they're great, where they're, you know, people idolize them for it. So, you know, it's just, it seems like a better use of time and energy to really focus on those great things because, you know, when you focus on the thing that you're good at and you become great and then that becomes, you know, part of your career and you get to do that for a living, like how great does that feel? You know, I know for myself it feels really, really awesome. So, you know, I think it's totally worth the time to sit down, think about what your strengths are, and then start focusing your time and your energy on them rather than, like for me, to work on a weakness and try to get better at it and not see, you know, really awesome progress, I just feel like I'm banging my head against a wall and I'm wasting my time. Um, and I don't want to do that. I want to, you know, get even better at what I already do well um, to a point where, you know, I'm one of the best. So that's my, my goal and I want to help as many people as possible. So that's where I, I focus my energy for sure. Richard, you're loving the sun. I love the sun. We need more sun here. <laughs> we got a bit of sun here, but uh, it's still kind of cloudy. It's been a crappy summer so far, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, so that's it. I got to run and get ready for the next class. Um, if you have any questions, comments, um, feel free to message me if you ever want to. I'm more than happy to chat with you, or you can leave them in the comments below and, and I'll respond to them. All right, guys, have an awesome evening. Talk to you soon.